Hi friends, welcome back to my coping corner. Today we're going to be learning two new coping skills from our coping card deck. Again, if you'd like to buy your own deck, you can look in the description to find the link. Today we're going to be focusing on movement and processing. Now there are lots of different types of movement that can be used as a coping skill and there are lots of different type of processing skills that can be used as a coping skill. Today we're going to focus on jumping jacks for our movement and we're going to focus on turning upside down for our processing. Now I'm really excited to show you some of my favorite ways to do these coping skills. Are you ready? Let's go do it. All right, friends, are you ready for some movement? Like I said, there are lots of different movement things that we can do, but today we're gonna do jumping jacks. I'm gonna show you a couple different speeds to do, but you know how to do it. Ready? Let's do it. So in a jumping jack, you want your legs and your arms to move at the same time. You can go faster or slower. This gets our blood pumping and helps produce things called endorphins, which are like happy chemicals in our body. And that's one coping skill that we can do for movement. Now let's move on to being upside down. All right, so now we're gonna try going upside down. I'm gonna show you three different ways that you can go upside down. Whatever you're most comfortable with or whatever you're able to do. The first way is the hardest, and it's a tripod headstand. So you're gonna put your fingers together like you're praying, and you're gonna put your arms down on the ground. I have a yoga mat to, to cushion my arms and my head. You put your arms down like this, and you put your head down in between your forearms like this. Then you push your feet up, and you walk your feet forward, and then eventually, when you're ready, you lift yourself upside down. I use a wall so that I don't flip over backwards, but you don't have to if you're better at it than I am, which you might be. So that's our first option for going upside down. See, just that easy. Our second option for going upside down uses something like this. I forget what this is called. It's like a feet up or something like that. I call it my upside down thing. And to use this to go upside down, you start in like a folded over position, and then you put your head down in here with your shoulders on the patty, just like this. Then, just like before, when you did the tripod headstand, you kick your feet up in the air. And you can stay upside down as long as you want. You can even move your legs once you're really good at it. Just make sure and keep those stomach muscles tight to support your back. And then come down when you're ready. And that's how you do our second option for going upside down option for going upside down can be done by any of you because I'm sure all of you have a couch or a chair that you can use and it's just as and you probably do this all the time it's just as simple as turning around and putting your head over the side of the couch or the chair like this see going upside down is great it helps your blood circulate to your brain. And again, just like jumping jacks, gets endorphins going, which are things that make you happy inside of your body. And when we feel happy, we feel like we can deal with anything. So going upside down and jumping jacks are great options as coping skills. Jumping jacks are a movement coping skill, and going upside down is a processing coping skill. We get to see the world in a different way and it can just change our perspective. Wasn't that so much fun? I love finding new coping skills that allow me to move my body or do things that I don't always do on a regular basis. 
Thanks again for joining me today, and I hope you'll join me next time in my coping corner. Bye, friends.